Okay, welcome. This is the last week of April's video. And we are going to talk about something called the combined gas law. And um, it's very similar. It's actually a combination of all uh, all three of our laws that we've uh, previously talked about. And then how we can solve a couple problems using that. Um, I'm going to uh, present something here to you. So you guys can see. Awesome. All right. And here we go. So the combined gas law. So here's the combined gas law. Um, the combined gas law, I'm going to make this as big as possible. Um, the combined gas law is, is where you take P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. And I'm going to draw that on the board and we'll talk about it a little bit. But the ones, remember, are initials. So this diagram helps you see that pressure can be any unit. Okay, as long as it's the same in P1 and P2. Volume can be any unit, as long as it's the same as V1 and V2. Temperature, though, has to be in Kelvin. Remember to add 273 to Celsius to get to Kelvin. Always put your temperatures in Kelvin. And that's what I'm seeing on the assignments, is that not everybody's putting them in Kelvin. But that's the combined gas law, okay? So here's our problem. We have a gas balloon with a volume of 106.0 liters. The temperature is 45 degrees Celsius, and the pressure is 740 millimeters of mercury. What will its volume be at 20 degrees Celsius and 7, 780 millimeters of mercury of pressure, all right? So I'm going to write the uh, <laughs> equation down first. P1, V1, T1 equals P2. T2, T2, okay, and we're gonna write down our conditions. Um, we got we got an initial volume, so a V1 of 106, and we have an initial temperature, T1 of 45 degrees Celsius, and then we have a P1, a pressure of 740 mmHg, and then that's, so that's our initial conditions. And then we want to find our V2, which is what our final volume is, knowing that our second temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, and that our uh, second pressure, also in millimeters of mercury, is 780 mm hg okay so let's uh let's bring this back again you i can't see what i wrote on the board but i wanted to write it all up there before i, I showed it to you so in this mess we have uh, p1 v1 over t1 equals p2 v2 over t2 we know our initial volume is 106 liters we know our initial temperature is 45 degrees Celsius. Now, temperature has to be in Kelvin. So we take our 45 plus 273, okay? And we get, what, 8, 11, 318 Kelvin. And then our pressure is 740. Um, for our final, we we're solving for volume. Our temperature is 20. So we add 273 to that to get... 293 Kelvin, and then our pressure is 780. So we have everything except one. And once we get ourselves to one variable, now we can solve. Just getting me another marker. All right, so I'm going to substitute. So my V1, so actually my P1 is 740. My V1 is 106. And I'm dividing it by my T1 in Kelvin. 318, and that's going to equal P2, 780, times V2, which is what we're solving for. You can put X there or whatever. And then for T2, 293. And then from here, I'm going to lower this down, is that we're just going to cross multiply, okay? And we'll cross multiply, and I'll, I'll type it in my calculator as we go. Um, I take 740 times 106 times 293, and that's a really big number, but I'm going to write it down the whole thing. It's 
22, 982, 920. Okay, and that's going to equal, I'm going to take 318 times 780, and I get 248. It's a 4. 0, 4, 0 times V2, okay? And so now it's an algebra problem. Solve for V2. I divide by 248, 0, 40. And I did solve for V2. So I get 22982, 920 divided by 248, 0, 4, 0. And I'm going to go 3, sig. Figs. I think that makes the most sense from what I see here. 92.7, and since volume is in liters, it's going to be in liters. So we have a lot of moving parts here. I mean, we're changing, we're changing temperature and pressure. So to do that means our volume is going to either go up or go down, and we can find exactly what our volume of gas will be using the combined gas law. P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2, okay? And you can replay this and see the math again. But the whole key is getting the numbers in the spots and then cross multiplying. Now, real quick here, before we show you one more sample, I want to uh, want to look at um, this form, this equation. Uh, if we can, I'm going to bring it up here so you can see a little bit better but P1, V1 over T1, P2, V2 over T2. So let's say that our temperature is constant. I can cover up my T's and I got Boyle's law. P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Let's say our pressure is constant. So I cover up my P's. It's V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. That's Charles's law. Let's say my volume stays constant. Then I get P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, which is gay lussay's law. So when something is constant, we just get it out of the equation. We just take it out. And then when we do that, we have our other gas laws that we've previously talked about. That's why it's called the combined gas law, because it combines all of the uh, other gas laws. All right. So let's look at one more problem that kind of does that. All right. Maybe. Technology, gotta love it. There we go. So in this problem, you can read it with me. It says a gas, the volume of four liters. So we have an initial volume of four liters. Um, at a pressure of 205 kPa, so our initial pressure is 205 kPa, is allowed to expand to a volume of 12 liters, so our new volume is 12 liters. What is the pressure if the temperature remains constant? So we're trying to find P2. Now, this is what I'm talking about with, the, with things remaining constant. What we can do to make our lives easier is we can say, okay, so I know, I know my initial volume, I know my initial pressure, I know my final volume, I don't know my final pressure, but temperature stays constant. So if temperature stays constant, I just take it out of the equation. Now I got P1, V1 equals P2, V2. I substitute in, P1 is 205 kPa and my V1 is 4.0, and that equals my P2, which I don't know, but my V2 is 12. Divide both sides by 12, and now I can solve it. So with my calculator, I take 205 times four, divided by 12, and when I do all that math, I get P2 to equal 68.3, and my units are K, P, A. Uh, maybe two sig figs, so probably 68 would be my best answer. But there's a, on the assignment, you'll see that there's plenty of opportunity to uh, um, some variance so that 
as long as you're close, I think you'll get it. The 68 KPA. Uh, the point is that if something is constant, we don't want to include it. Or if you want to substitute a number in there, substitute one, keep it at one. And it's just like it's not even there when you do the math. Remember to substitute numbers in, cross and multiply if need be, but just take your time and solve with the algebra. Um, we'll have class Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. Stop by, say hey. Even if, you, even if you're done with this, just stop by, say hey. Promise I'll shower and shave. Um, and then um, if you have issues with any of the other assignments, please uh, don't hesitate to bring those. Um, we can go off to a private chat if you want to just do a little one-on-one -on -one conversation about it, and we can make sure that you guys are fine. Hey, man, we're almost done. We're almost through this. Uh, take care. Take care of yourself. Stay away from people. The longer we can maintain this social distancing, the better it's going to be for all of us. Okay? Um, good luck, and bring questions on uh, the class.